Honey, where's my vest? We're going out! I don't know if you guys travel, but most communities don't wear so many fucking vests, Boise. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Around the rest of the world, they have sleeves. I don't know what is happening. I appreciate it. You guys are just getting the party started. Some of you, just getting the party started. Good for you. Some of us are like an hour from sweatpants. I also feel that. There's no shame in that. I get it. That's, that's the best part about going out, is going back. It feels so good. Just like we never go out and we did it. We fucking did it. But this is better. Back on the couch. Did you still want to do it? Good, I'm tired too. I like drinking like many of you. I'm on team alcohol if you have to pick. Yeah, couple people on team alcohol. The rest of you guys are like, what are, what are the other teams? I know marijuana has a very popular team. I understand that. Well, you're gonna have to pick a side in the upcoming pot versus alcohol war. <laughs> okay, you guys look nervous. I made that up. That's not real. You guys are like, when's that? Oh, shit. Did Trump tweet something? No, I'm just saying, if there was a pot versus alcohol war, I thought about it. Well, you guys were at work. I thought about it. I'm going with team alcohol. I am. Because when the fighting starts, yeah, we'll be drunk. But I feel like more of us will show up. That's an advantage. Team Weed, you're good people. I have my doubts, okay? You're gonna be like, was that this morning? Yeah, sure was. Budweiser took the hill, you fucked up. And that's when Team Sober will be like, that, that was the wrong hill. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any sober people here just for fun? Not to shame them. Any sober people? A couple of woos. A couple of respectfully raised hands. <laughs> that's the official sober response. Who's sober? Here, present. <laughs> Physically and emotionally, what do you need? You want a LaCroix? I got some in my car. I don't know why sober people love LaCroix so much. I do not get it. I also don't know why they drink it like they're addicted to it. I don't understand. You gotta start cutting that shit with vodka, get rid of your LaCroix problem. Some people don't drink because they used to have a problem. And that is the only reason I will accept. Yeah, you ever talk to people that don't drink? You ask them why, and then they're just like, I don't know, I don't, I don't care for the taste of alcohol. Huh. I, I didn't know that mattered. You don't like the taste, you say. Do, do you smoke a lot of pot? Is that what this is about? They're like, oh no, I don't like that either. What do you do? Wait, do you just go home every night and feel your feelings? That's a nightmare. Why would you do that? Acquire the taste. Life's hard. Choke it down. Anyway, that's what I tell my kids. My kids are the reason I do not have a drinking problem. And I know that, I just took this test at my doctor's office. I'm not sure if they give it to everyone, but. <laughs> it was called, are you an alcoholic? And the first question was, do you ever drink alone? And I was like, no. My kids are usually around. <laughs> Hashtag blessed.
That's a hard test. The are you an alcoholic test. They have hard questions. How many drinks a week do you have? I don't keep a drink chart. I don't have that information. Is that on my Fitbit? How would I know? How many drinks a week do I have till I feel done? What do you want from me? I wrote down some, that's what I wrote down. My doctor was looking at it, he's like, okay, you drink some. He's like, what's your favorite drink? Now I know he meant like beer, cocktails, wine. I misunderstood. I was like, I don't know, the fourth one? He didn't say anything, but he did write something down. That's on our chart, I gotta live with it. <laughs> you can tell this is a big night, you guys. I'm wearing a shirt with buttons, I'm not messing it around. Yeah. This is really, with this hair and beard, this is about as nice as I can dress. I can't, I tried to dress up, doesn't work. I had to wear a suit to a wedding two months ago. I was walking down the street in my suit. A guy driving by yelled out his window, good luck in court. <laughs> and then I saw my reflection. I'm like, oh, he's not wrong. <laughs> it's either that or fun youth pastor. Those are my choices. I started growing my hair long when I turned 40, which is a very mild midlife crisis. That's all I have the energy and money to do. I had rebellion. When I was 20, I was a drummer in a punk rock band. Thank you, that's more fans than we had then. That felt good. I used to say stuff like, I'm not gonna be another cog in the corporate machine, man. Yeah, 20 years later, I'm all the way down to, I'm gonna stop getting haircuts. <laughs> yeah, screw you, supercuts, I'm off the grid. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do the hair flip to let the man know you mean business. It's like the exclamation point at the end of a long-haired sentence. Just, what? It's never a smart sentence. It's never like, so that's when I got my master's. That's never happened. <laughs> it's more like, so anyway, that's the day I learned. You can get a DUI on a bicycle. <laughs> so wise. You guys probably can't tell by looking at me, but I recently lost not really enough weight to clap for. <laughs> you shouldn't. Historically, you should not be clapping. It'll be back. When I lose weight, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm saying see you later. Until next time, old friend, bring bread. I got motivated to lose weight in a very weird way. I got an email from Amazon. And the email said, based on your recent activity, we thought you might be interested in this. And it was a picture of a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. Which, honestly, I've never not been a little bit interested in. But Unless you've been reading my journal, how's that your business, Amazon? <laughs> also, based on what recent activity? It's not like, oh, I ordered a case of bean dip, so this makes sense. <laughs> I've never ordered food from Amazon, not once. I think it's because I ordered an extra large shirt. <laughs> and then I returned it and exchanged it for a double extra large shirt. Yeah, that's when the hurtful algorithm kicked in. <laughs> Amazon's like, yeah, this is the kind of customer who would enjoy chips being mailed to his home. <laughs> also, $12.37 for one bag of Doritos. Not a good deal, Amazon. 
I am gonna blame the legalization of marijuana where I live, okay? <laughs> They're taking advantage of high people who can't do math. They just Google chips. They're at their weakest point. They're like, yeah, $12 plus shipping for Cool Ranch. I'm not gonna pass this up. I'm gonna be so happy I did this in three to five business days. I'll be so hungry by then. Two days after that hurtful email, just out of nowhere, Cinnabon started following me on Twitter. Why? Cinnabon, did Amazon tell you about the shirt? What the hell is happening? Cyberbullying is real. And it's pretty effective. That's the day I decided, I'm like, you know what? After I get those chips in the mail, I'm gonna make better choices. I'm trying, I just, I just turned 45 like three weeks ago. I'll take it. When I was 35 and I would walk into a locker room and I would see that super old guy completely naked, blow drying his testicles. I know there are some women who are like, what? But every guy in here is like, oh yeah, that guy's there. He's there right now. I don't, I don't think he turns it on until we show up, honestly. But my point is, I would see that guy at 35 and I would be like, that is disgusting. At 45, I mean, <laughs> it looks like it feels nice. <laughs> Look how relaxed he is. That must feel like a warm hug. You know what's funny is now, now, that I, <laughs> now that I have long hair, I'm still a little bit prejudiced against guys with long hair. It depends on the occupation, okay? Long-haired comedian, fine. Musician, fine. It's not a game show, but you would've won something. Uh, this, this might be a good time to point out, these are jokes, not problems to solve. kind of a solo thing I'm doing here. I don't know. <laughs> You're taking this way too personally. It's like two guys walk into a bar. What'd they do? Why are they there? My uncle owns a bar. Is any of this helping? No. <sighs> I'm gonna start the joke over. You know, now that I have long hair, I'm still prejudiced against guys with long hair, sometimes. Depends on the occupation. <laughs> Comedian, fine. Musician, just occurred to me. That's another one I'm okay with. You know what, fuck it. What else, any other suggestions? Magician, you know what? I don't care about their hair, not cool with them at all. Here's not the issue with black magic. Mine? That's, that's, a, that's a weird, just imagine he's in a box. He's pulling on a rope, but his fucking hair's in the way. He needs a hair tie. I'm fine with all those having long hair. I am, here's, here's one I'm not fine with. Cardiologist, bothers me a little bit. Long-haired cardiologist, I have questions. <laughs> if they're like, I just completed the procedure and I think your dad's gonna be fine. <laughs> that was a long way to go. Uh, <laughs> I 
I used to get annoyed with my wife because every time we have sex, she puts her hair in a ponytail. Every time. <laughs> this might be a weird time to mention this is not my wife, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, This is a mine. <laughs> I never understood why my wife did that. I, I, was, I was like, why, you know, why bother? Let's, but now I have long hair and guess what? I get it, I get it now. <laughs> it's like making out in a hair tent. It's very annoying. In fact, I would also like to do it, but I can't. Because if I put my hair in a ponytail, my wife will not fuck me. <laughs> She's been very clear about that. <laughs> it's not fair, it's kind of sexy when she does it. When she does the pre-sex ponytail, she's all business, super serious, like, all right, here we go, let's do this. I'm like, like do I need to stretch? What's about to happen? <laughs> I used to take it as a compliment, and then I realized it's the exact same thing she does as when she's getting ready to like clean the toilet. <laughs> She's like, all right, here we go. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I a chore? Is that what's been happening? Ugh, oh, this husband's not gonna fuck himself. Got a big day today, cleaning the bathroom, doing dishes, having sex. Where's that hair tie? Let's get this going. It is nice to be on the list. Wouldn't mind moving up a couple spots. I have, I have three children. I love them so much, you guys. I'm gonna say that before I say all this other shit. <laughs> Let the record show, I love them very much. And, and I miss them when I travel, but not the first day. <laughs> also, three is a lot. I'm not running a farm. I don't really need that many. I don't know what I was thinking. One out of three conceived 100% on purpose. That's not good, but we're not telling them which one. <laughs> we're saving that till they're angry teenagers. I didn't ask to be born, Dad. Like, well, we have something in common. <laughs> I had my shoes on when I made you. Don't get cocky. <laughs> That's a traction issue. Don't read into that. That's we had hardwood floors at the time. That's all that means. I don't swear in front of my kids. I don't know why. I see other parents do it. It looks really fun. I don't have a better system. I just make noises like a lunatic. I'm not cursing at my children. I'm just having an aneurysm. What'd you say, Dad? Not fuck. I called a kid bucko the other day. That's the whitest thing I've ever said. And I've rescheduled brunch, I'm fairly white. I didn't even know I knew the word, I just panicked. I was like, listen, bucko. Get out of here, I'm embarrassed, please go. I told my son to slow his roll once. I don't know what I'm doing. He's like, I will, jive turkey. Shut up. What? Who taught you that? I regret not swearing. If you have a baby, start swearing now. Never stop, they are counting on you. It's too late for me. My son is 16 now. Uh, quick impression of him. Yeah, you met him, he's fun. That's, that's every conversation. No words, just noises. It's like talking to a congested goose, just can't, can't. <laughs> How was school today? <laughs> All right, good talk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 16-year-old son, 10-year-old daughter, 7-year-old daughter. Whenever people hear my kids' ages, they're always like, well, at least the 16-year-old can babysit. And I'm like, mm, kind of. <laughs> I mean, I leave him in charge, technically, but I pull the 10-year-old aside. I'm like, look, I am counting on you. Get your little sister over here, too. We're gonna need her. 
Sometimes the ducks have to take care of the goose. <laughs> That's gonna be our code. If this goes bad, take your brother's phone, text me duck, duck, goose, I will haul ass home. <laughs> My son is swearing on his own. He's terrible at it. My fault, I provided no example. He has all the emotions, none of the proper curse words to express them. He'll come home from school, clearly upset, throw his backpack, I'm like, what's wrong, buddy? What's wrong? I had a crap shit day. I'm like, okay, that's a little redundant, but I can see you're upset. I'm like, what happened? What happened? There's a kid in my social studies class who's a real ass dick. I'm like, okay, that's not appropriate. Uh, asshole would have been fine. Dick would have been great. Ass dick's not a thing. Why do you swear like a foreign exchange student? You're shaming the family, bucko. Slow your roll. I'm done, I'm done making people. No more babies. No, I think I made my point. Three's enough. I had a uh, weird vasectomy. There's no way to ease into this part of the show. This is why I had a weird vasectomy. Uh, <laughs> because someone was observing the procedure. Uh, it was a medical student, I hope. Yeah, could have been a weird make-a-wish, I don't know. I... All they said is, do you mind if she watches? Which, wow. Uh, and all the ways I was hoping to hear that sense in my life, vasectomy had never come up, not once. So the doctor, the surgeon, he had to out loud, step by step, describe everything he was doing so he could teach the student. I am not unconscious. I can hear these things. I have to hear stuff like, now we're gonna cauterize. I'm like, <laughs> we're at the very end. He's doing the final stitching. And hey, 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 this table, you, you guys gotta be quiet. You still don't know I'm talking to you. Sir. You guys gotta be quiet. Okay. I don't think it's the Red Bull, dude. <laughs> you, can tr you can try that on the cops later. Like. <laughs> Do you know why I pulled you over? Probably the Red Bull, bro. <laughs> Shit gives you wings, I don't need red lights. I mean, here's the point. <laughs> this, I still think about this all the time because my, <laughs> my doctor said it. He's, <laughs> he's like, well, that's a little ugly, but it should get the job done. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was like, what the hell does that mean? I think he forgot I was awake, honestly. He was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's like, I was making fun of my stitch. You're gonna be fine, which is true. You guys look worried. I'm fine, everything's okay. <laughs> It's kind of hard to tell. It, it's not like I was a scrotum model before, honestly. But how about if we teach the medical student, I don't know, anything, we teach her to never say the phrase, that's a little ugly, but it should get the job done. That does not put the vasectomy patient at ease. It, it does kind of sound like what God would have said after creating the penis. Just like, oh, that's not what I thought it was gonna look like. Is that too close to the butthole? Maybe. Yeah, it's a little ugly. Should get the job done. Huh? I'm not coming in on Sunday, so ship it. I told my kids when I got a vasectomy because. I wanted to explain the reason I was sitting around with a bag of frozen peas on my lap. 
But now my kids have not eaten peas since my vasectomy. They won't do it. I'm like, they're not the same peas. They are, they're the same peas. They can have a new bag when that one's finished. That's a house rule. I explained it to my son, right? He's the oldest. I'm like, you know, you're, I had a best, you're not gonna get a brother, no more sisters. We're done. And he was like, well, I mean, you're done. I was, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, mom could have a baby with a guy who hadn't had a vasectomy. I was like, good point, ass dick. That's a crap shit thing to say to your father. I don't think I'm wrong. My youngest child came up to me a couple weeks ago and she was like, Dad, am I your favorite kid? I gave a very dad answer. It's true, but it's a very dad answer. I love all of you the same with all my heart. You guys have heard the answer. And she looked a little disappointed. Uh, and she was like, okay, because my favorite parent is definitely mommy. And I was like, you know what? Ask me again. <laughs> Shit changes. Life lesson time. <laughs> also, if I did have a favorite kid, it would be one that remembered to flush after they pooped every time. <laughs> We've all got room for growth. That kid's tough on my self-esteem. One time she came running into the bathroom, unfortunately right as I was getting out of the shower. Don't picture this too vividly. She was like five, she's curious. She points in the direction of my penis and I cannot stress this enough, she was not happy. Like just like, oh. It threw me, I froze, I was like, what? I don't know why that was my reaction. Like she was a tiny T-Rex, like they sense movement, she'll leave. <laughs> and then finally she just goes, your vagina's gross. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready for that either. Also, did not take it as a teachable moment at all. I responded in the same voice I would have used if I was being bullied in a junior high locker room. And I was like, it's not a vagina. <laughs> yeah, I want, you, I want you to remember that joke, it's important. Especially if you're a single lady who's in the crowd because that's what I think your response should be. A little late, that's what I think. That's what I think your response should be the next time some guy sends you an unsolicited dick pic. I want you to be like, your vagina's gross, Sam. Yeah. Just so somewhere out there, there's some bro who's like, what? It's not a vagina. Sexting's a little generational. I don't, want, I don't want it to be, but it is. My wife and I, we're in our 40s. I, I think my wife's a fan of my equipment. I also know if I asked her if she wanted to see a picture of my penis, she would be like, well, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Do I need to make you a doctor's appointment? Or... It's not sick, it's lonely. You're terrible at this. Also, I've been with my wife since I was 19. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm trying to prove by sending another picture of it at this point. Like, what's she supposed to say? Like, oh, you still got it, cool, great. Honestly, it might be time to start sending pictures of different penises. Uh, which I did try once. No, no, your judgment is correct. It did not go well. I was just trying to spice things up. I don't know how I didn't think about the first question. <laughs> Where'd you get this picture? I was like, oh shit, I didn't take it. I don't know that dude or anything. I, 
I just Googled dicks. And then I picked out one that I thought looked nice. You know, like a straight guy would do. I am, uh, I am the assistant manager of my family. <laughs> that is the position I have <laughs> given myself and been assigned. Assistant manager. My wife would be the manager. I try to work as a team. I don't always understand it. Sometimes I gotta be like, look kids, I'm not sure why it is so important to replace the toilet paper roll. But this is coming from corporate. <laughs> My hands are tied on this thing. I agree, we should pile a bunch of them on the back of the toilet. I brought that up at the meeting. But apparently it is very important to your mother that if you are on the toilet and you realize you're at a toilet paper, that you have to do a six foot crouch walk over to the cover. I guess she thinks it builds character. I don't know why. My wife's really, she's good, she's good. She should be manager. She's amazing at running a family. I'm not so good at it. Only reason I get to be assistant manager is I am sleeping with the manager. That's also why we have so many employees. I'm not good at details. If I had to take a kid to the doctor by myself, it is embarrassing what I do not know about my own children that I love very much, I swear to God. They're like, what's your daughter's birth date? I'm like, 12, 21. They're like, what year? I mean, every year. I'm, I'm pretty sure she has an ear infection. We don't even look in there. I get a quiz. I don't like your tone. I'll say that. Is your daughter allergic to any medication? Yeah, probably. I guess I thought you guys would write it down. It's gonna be embarrassing if we both have to call my wife about this. My brain is too clogged with useless information to remember the stuff I need to remember. It's mostly shit from the 90s, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. So when one day my wife says to me, by the way, our daughter is allergic to sulfa, and I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty important. I should always remember that. But I cannot. Because I have all the lyrics to Hey Now, You're an All-Star by Smash Mouth already in there. I would like them to leave, but my brain has decided, no, this is our on-hold music. I'll be staring off into nowhere, and my wife would be like, what are you thinking about? I'm like, somebody once told, I'm sorry. It happened again, I'm so sorry. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, you know that. It was in our vows. My wife and I argue sometimes a little bit. What'd you guys hear? It's not your business. I don't actually trust a couple who doesn't argue. You ever meet these people? We don't fight. I'm like, do you not talk? That's cheating. We never go to bed angry. I'm like, wow. I would be so tired. I've gone to bed angry. I woke up fucking furious. I've done all of it. That's what a relationship is. You're saying to somebody, look, I love you just the way you are. I just wish you were different. My parents don't argue, but that's because my dad <laughs> has gone along with every idea my mom has had for 40 plus years, signed up on all of them. He's like, you gotta pick your battles. I'm like, you've never picked one. <laughs> right now you're wearing a crocheted sweater vest that she made for you. That should have been a battle. Not only are you waving the white flag of surrender, she quilted it for you.
My wife has an incredible memory. She remembers every detail <laughs> of every conversation we've ever had. It's kind of like living with a court reporter. <laughs> Except court reporters are impartial. <laughs> just our whole life, she's running that stenographer machine. Just <laughs> and then one day I'm like, I never said that. She's like, whoosh. I'll read it back. <laughs> With a very confusing amount of detail. It's like, yeah, it was 2005, right before we moved, a couple weeks after my sister's birthday. We were sitting in the kitchen. You were wearing that blue shirt your grandma got you for Christmas. We were eating lasagna, recipe called for ground beef. We only had ground turkey. Turned out okay, a little dry. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. She's like, oh, well, that's when you said you didn't like my bangs. <laughs> you know what? I've been putting it off. I'm going to get to work on that time machine again. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to kill Hitler first. I made a promise. Then I'm fixing this bangs issue. <laughs> my wife and I just found out we have friends that are swingers. Is this weird to bring up in a dark room? Pineapple. <laughs> Pineapple? Do we need a swinger safe word? <laughs> the orgy hasn't started yet, pineapples. Calm down. Why are safe words always fruit, by the way? I don't know why it's always fruit. They don't, well, if you listen, they do, sir, and this is an important discussion to have. I like my coffee like I like my women. Enthusiastically consensual. <laughs> My wife and I, open-minded people. We don't, we, don't, we don't want it to be weird. We have friends that were swingers, but it's turned out to be a little weird. <laughs> because every time they invite us to do something, we're like, is this the time? <laughs> we should probably bring our good underwear, just in case. And then eventually we were like, wait, are they not even gonna ask us? Rude! We're good people. They could do worse. <laughs> one time after we hung out, my wife was like, would you, ever, would you ever do what they do? Would you ever want to go to one of those swinger sex parties? And I was like, no. She was like, really? You don't want to have sex with other women? And I was like, well, that <laughs> is not what you asked me. <laughs> I mean, I've been with my wife for over 20 years. I guess in my mind, if I was gonna have sex with another woman, I wasn't really gonna bring her. Does that make me a bad person? I mean, when you buy a new car, do you tow the old one behind you? So it can watch you drive the new one? No, you do not. Also, I know my wife, she'd be very supportive at an orgy, it would annoy me. She'd be like, just relax, I believe in you, you're gonna do great, please shut up, you've gotta stop. She'd be apologizing for me, I'm so sorry, it's normally much better, I don't... He's tired, he's a good dad though, he really is. Also, it's pretty cold in here, so... He sent me a picture of a better time, if you want to see it. <laughs> I never said that before. I gotta write that down. <laughs> Jesus. Pineapple. <laughs> I wish I was a little more adventurous uh, in the bedroom. I hear people talk about role play, which it sounds fun. But, you know, I giggle. I've been told that ruins it. <laughs> Sorry. I would like to do funny role play, which is only fun for me. Uh, like, I want to dress like a judge. Just so every time my wife touches me, I can say, I'll allow it. <laughs> tried once. She was like, overruled, I guess. <laughs> That's fair. It's her bathrobe. 
<laughs> Some couples uh, like to watch pornography together. We're gonna go table by table and figure this out. Easy, guys, easy, all right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is actually the very reason I don't like watching pornography with my wife. It's, it's more aggressive than you realize when you're alone. It's actually true. When you're by yourself, you don't notice. When you're with, when you're with a real human woman, porn dirty talk, super aggressive. Like, do you like that? And like, jeez, I've never been that angry or confident. I've said those words. It was a different tone. It was, it was like, do, do you like that? Seems like if I'm asking, that's a bad sign, probably. I got two moves left, should I use them now? I got one move left, should I use it now? That's not a good couples activity, I wouldn't recommend it. My wife and I, we're gonna keep watching pornography separately. And then we will report together with our findings. But it's not a good couple's activity. You think it's hard picking a restaurant, try picking a porn clip as a team. <laughs> You're just staring at the screen like, <laughs> people are into some weird shit. Unless you, no, I'm good too. Oh my God. I'm just gonna search for loving eye contact. That is my normal go-to. I got a whole folder called feelings. Some people record themselves having sex, which I, I would never do that. I would never, this is how I know I don't want that to happen. You ever accidentally seen yourself in the mirror during sex when you weren't ready? It's like the sexual equivalent of the cell phone picture being the wrong direction. Where you're just like, oh God, who's that? Is that me? Fuck! Cause you feel sexy and then <laughs> you see yourself. You're like, sweet mother of God. You look like one of those blow-up things in front of a car dealership. I'm like, less active. Like, <laughs> half inflated, just, Arr. Sales over, Arr. Also, my wife talked the whole time. That you're not supposed to talk during pornography. It's disrespectful to the artists. You also don't need to say, just so you know, I'm never gonna do that. I know you're never gonna do that. That's why I was gonna watch this lady have a go at it. <laughs> I live in the Seattle area. I feel like there's a lot of polyamorous people. Uh, Boise, we familiar with polyamory? This just, just turned into a TED talk. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's not monogamy. It's like many multiple relationships. Everyone's fine with it. It's not considered cheating. It's a very high degree of difficulty. I will not be attempting. <laughs> I've never thought, if there was more people I could disappoint, my life would be great. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, talk, I talked to a guy after a show one time. Uh, he, he, he had a wife, he had two girlfriends, they all lived together. He's like, polyamory is the best. He's like, monogamy is not natural. And I was like, you might be right. <laughs> but I know something else that is not natural. And that is having to listen to three people Tell me how their day at work was. <laughs> the human brain has some empathy limits. I will not give a shit about all of you every day. I will not. <laughs> the third time in the day, I have to be like, I don't know why they don't fire that bitch either. I am done, I promise you. I will be pretending to listen, but in my head, it's gonna be somebody wants to. Yeah. Bye, have a good night, you guys. I appreciate it, gotta go. Yeah.